Everyone in the UK receives a certain amount that they can earn tax-free from both dividends and capital gains. Here are five things that you need to do before the new tax year starting April 6, 2024. We have had a roller coaster of decisions and policies from the government in recent years, and some of those decisions will come into effect in a month's time. Here are five things that you need to do before the new tax year starting April 6, 2024. The first thing you need to do has to do with your allowances. We have seen some major, major changes to almost every allowance that is available to us, but let's start with dividend allowance and capital gains allowance. And just a quick reminder. Everyone in the UK receives a certain amount that they can earn tax-free from both dividends and capital gains. For the new tax year, the dividend allowance is a measly £500 and while it's £3,000 for capital gains. But a quick history to see where we are coming from. For dividend allowance, it started in 2016 when a £5,000 allowance was introduced after abolishing the dividend tax credits. The allowance was then reduced to £2,000 just after two years, starting from April 2018. It was further reduced from £2,000 to £1,000 starting from April 2023, that's this tax year or last year. And then it will be further reduced to £500 starting April this year. As for capital gains allowance, it was reduced from £12,300 to £6,000 in April 2023. It was further reduced to £3,000 starting April 2024. But what exactly are dividends and capital gains? Dividends are applicable to business owners. So imagine you own a business, let's say you sell Nigerian food. Dividends is a share of the profits that your business makes that you can pay to yourself as the owner. This same logic also applies to shareholders because shareholders are owners of a company. So some companies do give out dividends to their shareholders. A practical example, let's say I earn £2,000 in dividends this tax year and I'm a basic taxpayer. I would not pay tax on the first £1,000 and then pay an 8.75% tax on the other £1,000. Capital gains, on the other hand, are profits you make when you sell an asset for more than the amount that you purchased it. This applies to different types of assets. For example, if you sell your business for a profit, you pay capital gains. If you sell investment stocks or bonds for a profit, you pay capital gains. If you sell property or land or anything like that, you also pay capital gains. And the reason why this is very important and you should look into it is because these allowances cannot be carried over to a new tax year. So if you don't use it, you lose it. And considering the fact that it's even going to be reduced starting next tax year, it's all the more important that you use as much as you can this tax year. So if you have some investment, let's say for example, a general investment account, which is a tax account with over 6,000 profits, you can sell the parts of it that would make you fall within that 6,000 and move that into an ISA. The second thing you want to do is to review your tax codes and this is to ensure that it's accurate. A quick refresher, everyone in the UK have a personal allowance of £12,570 and that means that this part of your income won't be taxed but when you start earning over £100,000 you start losing your personal allowance. This allowance has been frozen by the government to 2028 to 2029 which ultimately increases our taxable income in what's called fiscal drag or stealth tax and what does this mean this simply means that for every tax year that your employer just increases your pay in line with inflation people are either going to be dragged into paying tax or they're going to be dragged into paying tax as the higher rate or they'll just pay more tax in general so once you earn more than your personal allowance you start paying income tax the amount you pay depend on the tax band that you fall in so the basic tax rate is 20%. That is for those earning an income between 12,571 to 50,270. While the higher tax rate is 40% for income between 50,271 to 125,140. Remember again, once you start earning over 100k, you start losing your personal allowance. And if you earn up to the maximum of 125,140, 
you would have lost all your personal allowance. The last stars band is the additional rate, which is 45% for income over 125,140. This doesn't mean that if you earn, let's say for example, 65,000 pounds, you will be taxed 40%. It just means that any income over the basic rate limit of 50,270 will be taxed at 40%. So if your tax code isn't right because HMRC thinks you earn more than you are, maybe you got a bonus towards the end of this tax year or you did some extra shift, you just earn an extra money and HMRC factors that in to think that you're earning more than you should. You want to reach out to them to correct it before the new tax year. If you're getting value, please like and subscribe. It tells YouTube that you're getting value and helps the channel reach more people. The third thing that you need to do is to claim tax relief on pension contributions. Based on our previous example, if you're contributing to your pension as a higher rate taxpayer, you could reclaim an additional 20% tax on your pension contribution. And the fact is that many people don't know about this. Many people think that this will be done automatically, but what they don't know is that you have to make an effort and you have to claim it. And you can do this in two ways either through your self-assessment which can be done online or by contacting HMRC directly or you just reach out to an accountant to help you with it. But one thing you need to know is that you can only claim back tax relief for the last four tax years. Next, we'll talk about ISAs. And just like your allowance, your ISAs is also a use it or lose it kind of allowance. Each adult in the UK has an ISA allowance of £20,000. You can save up to £20,000 in one type of ISA account or you can split the allowance across some or all of the other ISA types, which are Cash ISA, Stocks and Shares ISA, Lifetime ISA, and Innovative Finance ISA. But you can only pay £4,000 into your Lifetime ISA in a tax year, and the government will give you £1,000 if you max out that £4,000. There is no limit to how big your pot can grow, your ISA pot I mean, and also the kids are not left out. Each of your kids have £9,000 allowance. So in a family of four, you have a combined ISA allowance of £58,000. That's £58,000 you can invest tax-free every tax year. And I know very few families can invest this much, but the idea is to invest as much as you can. If you want to learn about ISAs and the upcoming changes to ISA in the new tax year, check out the video on your screen and also in the description. The fifth and last thing that you need to do is to check that you're getting paid efficiently. One efficient way is salary sacrifice. So what exactly is salary sacrifice? Salary sacrifice allows you to redirect a portion of your salary pre-tax towards benefits like pension contribution, childcare vouchers, company car, thereby reducing your taxable income if you fall into a higher or additional tax bracket. Salary sacrifice can be particularly advantageous to you. By reducing your taxable income, you contribute less towards tax. Another category of people that can benefit from salary sacrifice are those that are close to retirement and they are aiming to maximize their pension contribution so they can boost their pension pots for retirement. If you can get your employer to do this for you, especially with regards to pension, also ask if they can add the national insurance savings from their side to your pension contribution. In conclusion, this new tax year brings changes that can impact your finances. So take action today. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a comment below. I would love to connect with you. See you in the next one.